Well, this is a bike that I'm incredibly excited to talk you through today because this is a multiple Ironman champion Joe Skipper's Argon 18 E119 Triplus Disc. Well, I was going to start this video by saying Joe is an uber biker of the sport, and whilst that's certainly no lie, Joe is proving time and time again that he is more than just an uber biker of the sport with runs like 237 marathon at Ironman Wales. Joe is proving that he is such a well-rounded and top-level athlete. And something tells me we might be seeing a lot of this bike out here at the Ironman World Championships. But to the bike itself, obviously this is the new tri-bike from Argon 18, the E119 Tri Plus Disc. And yes, we have disc brakes on this bike. And Argon 18 have tried really hard to integrate those as well as possible, not just in terms of the aerodynamics, but we've also got an exhaust port kind of cooling the disc brake on the back there. But there's a lot that's been changed on this bike ahead of the Ironman World Championships, which I'm really excited to run through with you today. So let's start with the front end. So we've got this lovely sweeping base bar. It's a really nice design, but also into these grips and into the brake levers. I know it's such a small and subtle thing, but actually it's really well done. And these are the little things that can make a big difference. And then coming up from that, we've got this mono riser, which obviously you can swap out the adapters, change the height, the angle, etc. And then this is where things get interesting and different. Obviously, Joe swapped out the aero bars. We've got these revolver aero bars. You notice he's also riding revolver wheels. We'll get onto those very shortly. But revolver apparently actually started out by making aero bars before the wheels. And they were one of the first companies to make these kind of one-piece designs that fill in that area beneath the arms. And whilst you can actually buy these aero bars, these have been ever so slightly customized for Joe. And apparently they've made them slightly longer here, obviously to fit Joe's position, but also so that you can fit this bottle and hydration system in between, or at least behind the arms. You also notice that the aero bars actually cut round beneath the elbow, so he's locked in nice and securely. And then, as I mentioned already, he's got this nice position that you can just rest the forearms into. They've also integrated the computer amount into that. So a really nice, sleek design. Right, now on to the wheels. Oh yes, looking forward to this one. We don't see many tri-spoke wheels in triathlon these days, so to have one front and rear is pretty special. It's really cool. So these are obviously revolver wheels. They're the new Troika Max tri-spoke wheels. Don't quote me on the pronunciation of those, but a lovely tri-spec wheel, and apparently their fastest wheels to date. Lovely job, Revolver. But also, they haven't stopped there in terms of helping out Joe, because they've also made some disc brake covers. So for the actual rotor of the disc brake, they've got these little covers, they fill in the gap, and in case you're wondering about heat dissipation, they're not bonded to the rotor themselves. They're actually just connecting through the lock ring. Pretty cool stuff. Now onto the tyres on those tri spoke wheels. We've got the Michelin Power Time Trial tyres. Not tyres we actually see too often. We've got 23 mil on the front, 25 mil on the rear. And I've just been informed that Joe's done with tubeless, so he's going to be running latex tubes. And now to the rear of the bike, let's talk through some of the other components and, of course, the group set. So Joe's running SRAM Red ETAP on this bike, and no surprise is he's gone for a one by setup. Suits this course out here in Kona. He's got the drag to zero single chain ring on the front. That's a 54 tooth. That is on the rotor in spider crank set. So he's got the power meter in that. He's got 165 crank length. And then on the end of those, he's got speed play pedals. Coming back from that and teamed with the 54 tooth single chain ring, he's got a 1028 cassette. That's all connected by a ceramic speed chain. He's gonna be obviously getting a new one ahead of the race. The athletes often drop their bikes in a ceramic speed just a few days prior and get some lovely treatment from them. Coming down from that, you will notice obviously he's got the ceramic speed OSPW jockey wheels with that lovely aero cover. Okay, now for some of the final bits, such as hydration and saddle. At the moment, it doesn't look like there's a ton of hydration on there. So I think it's time we get Joe in. All right, mate. So 
I'm a little bit puzzled because you've only got one bottle cage and one bottle down here. Presumably you've got more for race day, right? Yeah, so for the race, I'm, I've got a different saddle that I'm going to put on. So this one, my dad just put on because he took my race bike out and I took my training bike out. So I've been training on a different uh, saddle. It's the one where I raced out in Wales. So I'll just swap the whole seat post out and it's got two bottle cages on the back. Then I'll have one on the front. And then this one on 50-50, like I don't really need it for the nutrition, but I might keep it on. It's just, um, yeah, I'll just see what I feel like. Talking about the like kind of dual bike situation, because this isn't uncommon, a lot of pros do this. Do you have more or less an identical setup for training and then just one that's sort of ready for race day? Yeah, so basically the setup's exactly the same. So the good thing if I change the, the whole seat post with the other seat that I'm going to use, it's absolutely identical, you know, like, so that bit is exactly the same. And then I haven't got a mono bar on the other one, but I've got a different bar system, which is obviously a lot more cheaper and easier to set up, but it's exactly the same as, as this. So the whole setup's like identical. This one's just got better parts, obviously better wheels on it and everything's just a bit more high quality. Nice. So then when you swap from the training bike to the race bike, you get that boost, you know, from having a lot better components on it. Awesome. So um, also, obviously, I'm loving the wheels. Uh, I mentioned about the tyres. Do you know what pressure you're going to run on race day? Because it's quite hot out here, so that's um, something you've got to factor, haven't you? Yeah, probably put 90 in before the start because I think like when the sun comes up, it's going to heat it up a little bit more and the pressure might go up a bit. So 85 to 90 probably at the start, something like that. Brilliant. Well, mate, I'm, I'm really looking forward to watching you. So best of luck and thanks ever so much for joining us today. If you guys have enjoyed today's video, please do give it a thumbs up, give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe.